Hello everyone, we are doing module 5 on scalable shared memory systems. This is lecture number 2 where we are going to discuss about the basic operation of a directory. So before we go into understanding how a directory works, some definitions or terms we need to understand. We will discuss them one by one but a quick overview. So we have a concept of a home node. Home node as the word says, um, the data block is in this particular, particular node of the system. Now my what is my system? My system consists of several nodes connected to a scalable network. Every node has a processor, a cache and a memory. All right, so this is the picture you have to keep in mind. When I say home node, a processor when it accesses a block and if that block is available in the memory slice with its node, it is called a home node. Home node is also the node which is going to initiate a request. Okay? Then the concept of a dirty node. Dirty node is that node which has the block in the dirty state. Dirty state meaning it will be the provider of the node. It will have to write back this data to the particular uh, memory location as and when it evicts that data block. Then we have a concept of an owner node. Owner node, word says ownership, so it has the data, it has to provide the data when asked for. Exclusive node is uh, in addition to the E state which we were discussing, exclusive says that this is the only copy of the node in the com uh, complete system, right. So this block is only held by, exclusively held by a particular node in the system. Local node is this node where the data is available and remote node is all the data blocks which come from other nodes and not this particular node, okay. So more details we will see one by one. Okay. Home node was easy whose uh, main memory has the block. So you will have that slice of memory in that uh, this particular memory block is allocated. Dirty node has a copy of the uh, data block in a modified state. Owner node, uh, it currently holds a valid copy of the data item and it uh, is owner. So it has to supply the data whenever asked for. So this owner node could be the home node. When will it be the home node? When the data is clean because uh, the owner is the home because that clean data block is there sitting in the memory of that particular node. And the owner node will be the dirty node when this particular block is in a cache which has changed the data item. So owner node can be of two types. It can be the home node for clean blocks and it can be the dirty node for dirty blocks. Exclusive node is the node which has a copy of the block in an exclusive state. So here exclusive has got an additional meaning that it is either a clean or dirty. Here uh, in the protocol when we had the E state it meant that we had the clean data block and memory was up to date. But uh, if you have a node in a uh, housing a dirty block even that we can say that exclusive because it has an exclusive copy. So that is the single copy of the block in the system. So that is the concept of exclusive node. Then we have a local node. Local node is that node containing the processor which issues the request. So if P1 is issuing the request the node which houses this P1 is called the local node. Local blocks block whose home node is local, right. So all the blocks which are accessed by the processor, if all those addresses are in your own memory slice, then all these blocks are called local blocks, locally allocated blocks, right. They are sitting in that particular memory bank. Apart from all this, all the other addresses which are not in your memory bank, they are elsewhere are called remotely allocated blocks or remote blocks. Okay, so we will take an example to further imbibe this concept, the different types of nodes that is my system, uh, processor, cache, uh, network interface. So here I am going to see if each processor reads suppose data item A. Now this A is sitting here, it is in the first node and uh, that is the local address of A is node 1. Okay, if I just say this is N1. This can be N2 and N3. Okay, if I say three nodes are there, A is a local node of N1. If NP2 reads A, 
it has to read a from n1 it doesn't have a in its memory block so for p2 a is a remote node for p3 a is again a remote node next suppose p1 want to read b now where is b b is with n2 so for p1 b is a remote node for p2 for this b is a local node and for p3 b is a remote node now d d is with p3 so this d for p2 is a remote node okay so with this i hope you understand the concept of a local node and a remote node okay we'll continue the example here when p1 reads a a it is a home node for a it is a locally allocated block and it's a local node so with respect to block a n1 load n1 is the local node when p2 reads a a is remotely allocated right so it has to go to n1 to read through the network so it's remotely allocated hence it is a remote node for p2 when p2 reads d d is also a remote node because d is sitting in the third node and now here d is a dirty node because uh, this particular node has modified the data item hence if i ask for block d which is the dirty node so when i say for block d the dirty node is n3 here uh, both the local node and the dirty node were same but it may be possible suppose i take another data item say uh, read e or oh, sorry f say suppose this does a read f f is allocated here in n2 yeah we can have f here and let n1 change f right this is possible so n3 wants to read f f's local node is p2 uh, that is n2 and f is modified by n1 so if i ask you about f so you can say f is a local node for n2 it is a remote node for n1 and n3 and f is dirty with n1 so we can say that f is a dirty node with n1 so this way I think the terminology will be clear to you okay and then the owner last point owner of block d who is the owner of block d it is n3 because it has the block in dirty node if i ask you who is the owner of block f block f although it is local to n2 but because n1 has modified it i can say owner of block f will be n1 right so with those terminologies which we'll continue to use we'll quickly see a basic operation of a directory so how does a directory work as we said it the directory is going to maintain information of all the nodes how does it maintain that information easiest way is to maintain a bit vector uh, for k processors i can have a k bit vector every bit in this vector will say whether uh, that particular processor has cached this data item or not apart from that i need to know the dirty bit that is has any of these uh, processors modified the data item with every cache you will have the state of the cache block again the coherence fsm is also associated with it then you have the uh, dirty bit and any state bits associated with the cache so cache had the valid dirty and the state bit directory only has the presence bit vector that is the k bits vector and one dirty bit so that's the information okay so now every node uh, will have to orchestrate with the directory so it goes through its cache controller and coherence controllers to the directory to get the work done so when the directory receives an information from the local processor if it is a locally allocated node or it will get a request from a remote node where the remote processor is sending a request to this directory so now what type of request we have to handle a read request a write request and a write back or a block uh, replacement idea okay so we'll do these uh, two one by one all right so we have this uh, network where we have the directory each directory has got a presence bit vector with these dots saying that these are these nodes have cached the data item and who has cached and who has not cached the data item okay. so we have a k bit vector denoting the presence of the block across the nodes 
uh, read by a processor I we are going to see next and on block replacement we will quickly handle this first. On block replacement the request comes to the directory controller, it uh, updates the local memory right the memory will be updated and the dirty bit will be set off. So, this is the dirty bit with the directory you will just turn that bit off and also now remove the this bit from that particular node ok. Let us do the read operation if the dirty bit is off there is a dirty bit this bit is off and uh, this processor sends a request to the directory for reading a block the block is not dirty. So, processor says ok uh, the directory identifies who all are the sharers it simply puts a dot in the uh, index for this particular processor. So, p of i will become 1 that is this cell will be turned into 1 from a 0 and the data it sends the data right. So, sorry data will go from the memory. So, data is sent. So, read the memory and then turn the p of i to 1 that is when the dirty bit is off. If the dirty bit is on and you want to do a read, so what will you do? Uh, dirty bit on means the data is elsewhere, it is not in the memory. So, you need to recall the block from the dirty node. So, now you understand the concept of a dirty node. Directory goes to the dirty node, brings the data. For that dirty node, it changes the state to shared because that dirty node had the data in modified state, it now makes that state to shared. So, this particular dirty node will go from M to S, then the dirty bit will be turned off. We will provide the data to the processor and turn P of i equal to 1. Suppose pj was the block with the dirty node, it still has its bit 1, we are not going to remove this because it is a read request. On the write request, if the dirty bit is off, that is there is uh, no dirty block in the system, but there are sharers. So, I have to send an invalidation to all the j's where pj is equal to 1. So, all these dots which you can see these are the presence um, bit vector which says that all these 3, 4 processors have the data block. So, you have to send invalidation to them. The directory has to wait for an acknowledgement of invalidation. Subsequent to this because it is a write operation we need to make pj 0 for all these j who are earlier caching the block. Then we have to make pi equal to 1 because now pi is going to modify the data block and turn the dirty bit on because pi will change the data item. So, uh, when a write operation happens, if the dirty bit is off, you simply send invalidation to all the nodes which were sharing this data block. Once you get an acknowledgement saying that those nodes have deleted the block, you turn their bit to 0 and then give the block to pi making pi equal to 1 and turning the data uh, dirty bit on. Second case is when dirty bit is on. So, when dirty bit is on the data block is not with the memory, but there are no other sharers as well like right? there are not multiple sharers, but there is just exactly one sharer. So, I need to go to the dirty block that is the processor having the block in the dirty state, go to that block and this block was in M state change it to I that is make invalid uh, that particular data block, bring the data, give the data to the requester and then keep the dirty bit on because now you are still going to modify the data item, but the pj becomes 0, but pi becomes 1 right. So, if pj was the original uh, requester suppose this was the jth processor then you will make pj 0 and you will make pi equal to 1 because now pi will start changing the data item. Dirty bit remains on ok. So, this is how read and write will be handled. This is an overall picture there are many intricacies which we will discuss as we study the topic further. So, we have seen an overall operation of the directory. Now, why are these directories important? They are uh, good for my read miss because when a read miss comes I can provide the data from the memory and the directory simply keeps track of that. But on a write miss normally we had to send invalidations. If I was using a snooping I would end up sending a broadcast invalidation to all those nodes suppose 5000 nodes will receive invalidations. Whereas, in the directory you have a bit vector and you know which bits are on only those processors will receive an 
invalidation others will not receive hence your bandwidth uh, advantage comes there again uh, the number of p uh, nodes which share the data item are again not too many they don't scale with p suppose you have 500 processors if you make them to 5000 it is not that your sharers will become 600 or 1000 sharers will remain say if they were 80 to 100 they'll still remain 80 to 100 so you are number of sharers are limited hence the global broadcast is unnecessary okay so directories are valuable on a read because i can uh, simply satisfy it by the memory and on a write we don't need to broadcast because uh, the number of sharers are not too many so number of sharers do not scale quickly with the number of processor nodes hence uh, on a write miss we save on the broadcast disadvantages we have seen that empirically number of sharers is small, it does not go up very quickly and hence I do not need to send invalidations to many processors. So a broadcast of invalidation is easily nullified or not required in this case. Okay? So with these observations we can say that uh, directories can become a scalable approach and also help in organizing the directory in a cost effective manner. So although directories are helping us, we need to still learn how do I organize them in a best possible way so that as my system scales, does my directory scale and how do I manage the protocol more efficiently even after it is already efficient, how to make it more efficient. So we are going to discuss all this and look at details of how a directory works in future lectures. So with this, we, with an overview of how a directory functions, we will stop this lecture. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.